Some cherry sauce in. Was that English? What'd you say? I haven't tasted it yet. Oh. I'm like, what? Jace already knows more technology than all of us. <laughs> well, mm. you don't know either, do you, Gen Z? You know how to fix what Jace did? Yeah. How? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, right, go ahead. If you know. <laughs> He's still going. Helping out, Jace. Thank you, Jace. <laughs> thank you for thank you, Jace. thank you for turning off the sound system, and we don't know how to turn it back on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Let's see if, if Gen Z can do it. Jay Grills made Argentinian style steak and asparagus, and he made a homemade chimichurri sauce. So. Uh, he doesn't know I already tasted this sauce. I put it on a tortilla. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey, Jace. You see him? Where is he? Right here. What are you eating? Roxanne, Roxanne. Rock, oh. Rock, Thank you. Roxanne, Roxanne. What you want to do is put it in. <laughs> we have taught you well. More like your mama. Hopefully you guys can't hear the music upstairs. Um, it's all Aaliyah, we're having the Aaliyah night. Uh, my nephew, you know, we're showing him all the music videos, telling him more about Aaliyah. We tend to like show my nephews um, the music that came before, you know, and they share with us what they love too. Um, but that's often what we do at night and I can't show you because copyright. But that's what's happening upstairs. You may hear Baby Jace at some point walking across the floor. I don't know. But I'm coming to chat with you all. And I have a cup of spearmint tea. This is traditional medicinal spearmint tea. And I put like a dollop of honey in it. If you go over to my Instagram, there's a highlight that shows this tea and the honey I put in it, etc. But this is like one of my favorite nighttime teas. I only drink a few like for sleep. And this is one of them. It's just so nice and it's also good for hormonal acne, which is a great side benefit, but I just really like the smell and the taste of this. So uh, my sister, I asked her like, what should I talk about? And she said, give yourself advice. Like what advice would you give 20 year olds? And I was like, well, I could definitely only do advice from my lens, right? And so I wrote some things down and you know, I think 20s, my 20s were good. I think I I did more than I ever thought I could. I think I tried things. I, in my 20s, I was studying to become a professional musician. I was studying music education in my undergrad and ended up music performance, flute, exactly. Um, I was really good at it. <laughs> um, um, and then I became a professional classical musician for a bit. But everything in my 20s helped me get to where I am. So. Like, what would I say to my 20 year old self? Well, I think first and foremost, I would say take care of myself because, you know, <laughs> you know, I had just as much fun as any other musician. I never ran into anything crazy, but I definitely took risks. Um, and I don't think I always took great care of my mental health. That's for sure. Um, being a, a musician or an artist is a very singular track. To, they say to get to Carnegie Hall, you have to practice hard, and you do. You have to spend hours and hours by yourself, picking yourself apart, and then other, pick, other people pick you apart too. And so it's a mental trip. And so I wish I, in my 20s, would have gone to therapy and just took better care of myself mentally through much more self-reflection. But you know, that came later, but I would definitely tell myself to take care of my mental health um, I did pretty good with physical health. I've been running and exercising for a while um, since my, I think my sophomore year of college is when I started Couch to 5K, but that mental component, I would definitely tell myself to take care of myself because I think I wouldn't have hit some of the relationships I did to where I was making the easy choice, you know, that, that choice where you just kind of go with it 
when instead I should have stuck with my standards. So I would definitely tell myself that standards are great uh, as far as relationships and men go and no one and no thing should ever make you change it. Um, I think I compromised a few times in relationships um, as far as standards go. Like I just, you know, wouldn't always speak up, right? I wouldn't always, if I didn't like something, I wouldn't speak up or I wouldn't insist that he treat me a certain way, whatever guy it was. Um, as I got older, I did, right? As I got older, I stood firm in my voice, but I think I would tell myself at 20 even, it's okay to have standards, stick to them because the worthwhile men respond to your standards. They really, really do. It's what I found, at least. And then I would tell myself to travel outside of the country. I did a lot of traveling in the country as a freelance musician. You know, I went to several states. I went to most of the states in the US. Um, but I didn't travel much out of the country. And I think in my 20s would have been the opportune time. You know, I wasn't really like fully into my career, right? It was a time of exploration in college the many times I was there. Um, I wasn't fully into my career. And I didn't, I still don't, I'm not married. I don't have kids, but I just have more obligations than I did in my early 20s, my mid 20s, even my late 20s. So I would tell myself to travel outside of the country more, experience the greater world. Um, because one thing I've learned is that the more I experience, the bigger my world view, the better I'm able to dream, um, the better I'm able to push toward an unknown future. Um, and I just, I think the more you experience, the better. And then another lesson that I think I really, really wish I would have learned sooner is the lesson that everyone needs to at some point be alone. And it's like, especially hard for extroverts, I find introverts, I'm an introvert, um, it, it's very easy to be alone and in a relationship. And I did not value being alone until my 30s. And I think now I don't take it for granted. Like what you learn from being alone, you learn so much about yourself. Um, you grow so much from just being alone. You learn how to cope. You learn how to rely on yourself. You learn what you really, really do need emotionally and physically you learn what you need and so just being alone for even six months is so invaluable you learn how to make friends like real friends you know you go through these stages and that happens from being alone and you learn what you need so when you are in a relationship and you you aren't getting that you recognize that right it's so important to have alone time where you're not in a relationship, where you're relying on yourself so that you know what you want from a relationship when you're not getting it, and when someone is actually giving you more so you can appreciate it more. And so I really wish I would have spent time alone outside of a relationship more than I did. Like I did long distance and things, but I was in a relationship for most of my 20s with one man or another, and or boy, <laughs> and I really wish I would have spent time alone. I wish, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if somebody would have told me that whether I would have listened because I was in my 20s. <laughs> Maybe late 20s, right? Maybe. And along the same lines, trust your voice. I am a strong personality, if you can't tell, and I have a lot of opinions. Um, but sometimes in my 20s, I let other people's opinions matter more than my own. And now in my 30s, I would never let that happen. Um, and I learned that through, you know, failure, through mistakes. But if I could say to anything to myself, it would be to trust your voice because your voice is the most important voice. No one else's voice matters more than your own. You are steering your life no matter what. You still steer your life, no one else. So you have to trust your voice. Even if your voice allows you to make mistakes, causes you to make mistakes, at least you know, it was because of something you did and you don't have any regret because you made that choice, right? If you let other people's voice be more important than your own, you're gonna have regrets and regrets are no fun. So trust your voice. You might make changes that will lead you places you never expected. Scene change because I was watching this back and I realized there was something I wanted to touch on um, and that is coming out of college during a recession. 
because that's what happened. In your 20s, you came out of college in the midst of a recession. And my advice for you is to push through. It was not an easy time. Um, most companies had a hiring freeze. Um, income was so uncertain. Working in the arts, living, coming out of college with a music degree was kind of like, well, now what? Because no one was hiring. The arts are like the last thing on people's lists when it comes to, you know, the money funnel, especially federally. And so you came out of college at a very, very uncertain time with a degree that really wasn't doing the most for you. Um, don't give up. Don't give up. Things will pivot at some point. Stay your course. The arts will always be around in one way or another. And one very important lesson you have to learn as an artist, as a musician, is that if you want to be a musician, if you want to be an artist of in any sort, you have to do what will feed you. So that meant for me getting a job to pay my life, but also making the time later to practice and then go and do the artistry I wanted to do. You know, I was getting paid. We, we got paid for master classes by great universities, you know. Um, we did what we could, but even my friends who came out as orchestral musicians getting a salary um, still had to have supplemental jobs. And that's the reality of being a professional classical musician. It is very hard to have just one source of income because the orchestra life, the freelance life, the artist life, the traveling musician life, is an uncertain life and if you make that choice to understand that you've got to find a way to make it work you came out of college with friends in every field and you will have those friends forever you will see them all over even in your 30s when you move to Atlanta you'll see somebody who I haven't seen in a while and it will be like you saw each other the day before one thing you learn as you go is that life is so uncertain and it does not serve you well to just rely on one source of income as an artist. Um, orchestras fall, orchestras close. The traveling musician life works well until there's a recession, <laughs> right? Um, being a musician is so gratifying. The world needs you. Being an artist, the world needs you, but the, the US doesn't always value you. So you have to find a way to make it and still do what you love. So don't give up. Don't ever give up. But also take this moment in this recession to figure out how to make income in many ways. So just want to put that out there because I know coming out of school right now, if you're in school right now, is tough. Absolutely tough. I remember it. In my 20s, it was tough. I didn't know how I was going to make it. Um, but I encourage you to just stay the course. Keep practicing. Keep doing your art. Take that odd job. You'll figure it out. Gosh, this is already long, so I'll just do like a couple more. Um, let me take a sip of tea. I need a, I need a bit of a, a, a tea. Save money. <laughs> like, I don't even know a way to say that. Just save money. Like It's so important to save money. No matter what, save $5 if you can. Save money. You need money. You need something to fall back on. When you lose that job, you need money. When you break up with that boy, you need money. <laughs> when you're trying to just take a little time off, you need money. When you want to go on vacation, you need money. When you want to retire, even though it seems so far away, you need money. So save money. If you do nothing else in your 20s, save money and there's i mean of course there's a lot more i could say but i think one of the most important things i can say something i learned from growing up around florida a m university from being around people who grew up in that tradition and something that has served me well over the years and i would just reinforce it for myself reaffirm it for myself 
is to be unapologetically black. Your blackness is a source of strength, you know, coming from the diaspora, descendants of slaves is a source of strength. What it took for them to live, to build a life, for me to have the legacy I have, it only comes from your blackness. Don't let anybody's jokes about you. Don't let any situation make you question your blackness. You are gonna spend a lot of time in white spaces. You're a classical musician. You've experienced this your whole life. You've been the only many times and it won't stop in the arts. It won't stop. So don't allow other cultures to make you feel like blackness is less than the wonderful thing it is. Be black. If, if someone believes that you're that angry black woman, let them. It's fine. You know who you are. You know who you are. If someone thinks that you're just another hood sister, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with being a hood sister. Don't let the world make you think there's something wrong with what is just culturally amazing. Don't let ever, anyone ever call you ghetto and you react in a bad way because there's nothing wrong with being a black woman who lives in a low income neighborhood. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't let anyone ever make you feel like your blackness is less than the greatness that it is. You grew up in a strong tradition of, a, of just loving blackness. So continue to celebrate that. Continue to celebrate Juneteenth. Continue to find strength in the black women and the black people around you. There's nothing wrong with being in a lunchroom and gravitating towards the black people. There's nothing wrong with being in black organizations. Be black, unapologetically. Because if it wasn't so great, the world would not reflect blackness in every corner, everywhere. So if you do nothing else in your 20s, please be unapologetically black. So like I said, there's more, of course, but you know, I think that's enough in the comments. If any of this resonates with you, let me know. If you have advice for your 20 year old self, definitely let us know. And if you're in your 20s and you have any questions, definitely let me know as well. You in your 20s could have lived much more life than me already. We all have different circumstances. So I think everyone's voice, like I said, is valid. So in the comments box below, please feel free to share. And I'll come back and share more with you as we quarantine. <laughs> um, we're gonna continue to quarantine and chat here. So make sure you subscribe before you go. Uh, I really, really wanna shout out Maisha Thompson. You've been subscribed to me for three years. YouTube has this new feature where you could see on the back end like how long someone has been subscribed to you when they comment. And so I really wanna say thank you because I see you all the time commenting, you DM me, like we have good combo and I appreciate your support. So. Thank you. And until the next time, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and the blog. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Bye. This thumbnail is going to have to be something totally different because, one, it's late and I'm not taking a thumbnail picture. Two, my hair going to look different tomorrow. <laughs> if y'all didn't notice, like, I put on earrings and put this up. Um, I get rained on this week running. And I'm running in the morning, so this should be an interesting thumbnail. Tell me if you like the thumbnail.